All right, I think we'll get started. It looks like the number of uh, people joining us is kind of tapering off. So uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, I hope everybody's either having a good morning or a good afternoon or evening, depending on where you are. Uh, what we wanted to talk about today is um, what is coming out in the release that we are expecting to have some somewhere between uh, March 10th and March 14th. Um, I'm expecting the announcement of the release to go out um, next Monday on the 14th. Um, and so this will be for Met Plus version 4.1.0. And we have a, it's as uh, John just um, mentioned, there's a lot of development that went into this um, release, even though it's a minor release. Um, so uh, let's, I guess, get to it. Feel free to um, drop questions in the chat, um, and we will be taking breaks while going through this to be able to address those questions and, and um, actually ask the development team experts if, if I've missed anything. So, okay. <clears throat> so first off, um, this particular release uh, for Met Plus version 4.1.0, um, what we do is we call this uh, an official coordinate, coordinated release. So it, it's making sure that every component of Met Plus has what we um, feel is a fully supported um, uh, set of software um, that uh, can be used together to, um, to make up the Met Plus framework. So um, the Python wrappers are, are um, versioned 4.1.0. The Met um, tool, statistical engine, um, that version is actually 10.1.0 because it's been out for many, many more years than um, the Met Plus wrappers. In the Met Plus analysis suite, um, we have several components. Um, uh, the Met Viewer is a user interface um, and does a lot of, allows, you for, uh, allows for a lot of deep dive and, and deep analysis. We'll be covering um, what Met Viewer um, and for that matter, Met Express um, uh, can be used for um, in April. Um, Met Viewer's um, version is 4.1.0. Um, Met Express is also a user interface. Um, both of them talk to the same database. Um, Met Express is, is um, you know, more focused on simplified plotting interfaces, things that are um, the, um, the uh, queries and the plotting are, are uh, much more predefined, but have interactivity, um, and, and it doesn't necessarily require quite as much knowledge of the full data set that you're working with. So it's easier to just go and get some plots. Um, the, the release version, um, as far as I know, is um, 4.3.1. Um, that will be included in the coordinated release. Um, and then um, at the core of MetViewer and MetExpress are the database and then the, the um, calculation and plotting algorithms. So MetDataDB, um, which uh, handles the, the data input and output, loads the data into the database and so forth, um, that version is 1.1.0. MetCalcPy, which does um, the computation of the, the um, summaries um, or the aggregation of, of the data um, that's um, in the database, event equalization, pairwise differencing, confidence intervals, and so forth. Um, as well as um, it does uh, other calculations for um, diagnostics that we are choosing to, to keep primarily in the, the Python code base rather than integrating into C++. Um, so MetCalcPy um, is 1.1.0. And similarly, MetPlotPy, its um, partner um, package to do all the plotting, um, not only for MetViewer, um, but also um, plotting of, of the diagnostics field, also has the versioning of Met 1.1.0. Um, and you can see over on the right-hand side, um, you know, the, uh, where you can go to each one of those repositories to, to see um, what's going on in development. Um, here's just a, a visual for how the Met Plus package comes together, just a refresher, because we haven't gone over that um, very much over the past couple of uh, weeks. Um, so uh, basically, for Met Plus, um, uh, that um, is basically embodied kind of in this orange colored um, background, as well as orange arrows. So I saw um, in discussion, someone just asked, I think yesterday or the day before, the difference between wrappers and use cases. So I figured I would call that out here. So basically, use cases are what provide the low-level workflow. They set the paths to the data. 
the dates um, to process, the order of the, the tools for processing, um, and um, all the configuration options. And then those use cases pass that um, information to the wrappers so that the wrappers can um, make sure that the, the data and the config options go into the, the tools in the appropriate um, manner. So, um, so MET Plus then, um, you know, as we just saw in the previous slide, has several components. This is how the data kind of flows between them. Um, so MET um, is the, you know, the core statistical engine and it, it can take in um, gridded data, point um, forecast data, gridded analysis data, or point observation data. Um, and then it, you know, gets passed into particular tools based on the, the combination between whether we have gridded forecasts or, um, you know, uh, whether we have gridded or, or point forecasts and, and whether we have gridded or point observation data. Um, if there are uh, database applications going on, such as Met Viewer and Met Express, then the data um, that is output by Met um, is uh, loaded into uh, Met Data DB via the Met Data uh, the Met DB load class that is in um, Met Data DB. Um, and then there's also, um, as I mentioned, the the, um, the additional components, MetPlotPy and MetCalcPy, to support um, these two other applications. Okay, so let's dive right into, um, you know, enhancements. And I'm going to start with the, the core tools, the Met enhancements. First off, because there's a lot. I was just mentioning um, before everybody came online that when I started compiling um, all of the release notes from um, betas 1 through 6, which we used for doing, um, you know, a lot of user testing to make sure that we had um, implemented um, the, the development the way we wanted to and, and the way the users needed it. Um, I, it wound up with all the links to all the um, GitHub issues that um, are related to each development issue. It wound up being in Word 14 pages long with spaces. But I mean, it, it's there's just a lot of development. So what I'm showing you here is a highlights. It's certainly not everything. Um, so I would encourage you to, to go ahead and, and when we get the release done, is to go back and look at the, the full um, set of release notes to, to get a full um, sense of the breadth of each one of the um, uh, additions, enhancements, and, and so forth to the tools. So first off, we have um, two new tools that were added. Um, Yoda to MC um, is a tool that is focused on um, you know, kind of supporting, um, uh, uh, actually not kind of, um, on being able to, to take advantage of the DA system that um, at least uh, several operational centers are starting to, to migrate towards JEDI. Um, Yoda is, um, you know, kind of like the OBS processing tool. Um, and, uh, and so we have this tool now to extract the observations from the Yoda um, output for use with the point-based verification tools such as point stat and ensemble stat, point to grid, and, and so forth. Um, um, right now, it's focused only on the Yoda version 1 format. We know that Yoda version 2 is coming out soon, and so we will have to refactor um, this new tool to handle the new Yoda output um, in the next release. We also um, added in um, a new tool that is, in essence, kind of just breaking apart a, a current tool. Um, in the past, if you look at the stack of, of um, tools, uh, that we have for Met, 10, um, Met version 10.0, um, uh, you would see that Ensemble Stat is kind of a blue-green tool because green kind of um, indicates um, pre-processing and um, blue are, is our statistical um, tools. Um, and Ensemble Stat kind of filled that, it, it had kind of a, a weird, not weird, but it, it, it just, it, it had a footprint of both being Ensemble um, processing as well as ensemble statistics um, computation. And so um, what we have chosen to do is just break those apart um, to make it easier to especially enhance the Genons prod tool um, as well as, um, you know, make it a little bit more distinct on, on um, you know, the ensemble stat just computes statistics and Genons prod um, helps with um, the, the um, development of non-statistical post-processing ensemble product generation. So we, we do not um, want to to go um, into the, the statistical post-processing part of um, ensemble generation. So um, we've also, um, for grid stat, um, added in some, uh, some new capability. This is a contribution from the Met Office um, to um, start taking um, Met Plus to a new level. 
um, to be able to do domain decomposition for parallel processing using OpenMP um, to um, start making it more efficient um, to speed up um, the computation of, of um, especially memory and computationally um, expensive um, methods, including things like um, neighborhood methods um, um, and, you know, uh, just because it, the, the amount of computations is, is very large. We've, uh, with this um, enhancement to include parallel processing, we've seen a reduction in the computation of the neighborhood statistics um, by about 50%. Um, so now that we have this formula for um, enhancing grid stats, um, we're planning on, on working with the Met Office to, um, to uh, transition this um, capability over to some of our other um, more computationally in memory um, you know, uh, 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 challenging um, tools um, such as series analysis, ensemble stats, um, uh, probably point to grid, um, and 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 so forth. Um, so and mode, mode time domain, and, and so forth. Um, also in grid stat, um, there there's already a distance map line type um, that was added um, in previous versions, and so we integrated in um, the, the computation of two new diagnostics um, called G and G beta that were developed by um, Eric Gilliland, who is a, a statistician at NCAR, um, and so those are have been added. Um, for point stat, um, I think that the two biggest things that were added to point stat, at least as far as I could, um, you know, identify, was um, the um, enhancement of point stat, as well as ensemble stat, plot point obs, and point to grid, to support Python embedding of point observations directly. Prior to this, you would have to um, have passed the, the point observations to ASCII to MC using Python embedding right out in that CDF file and then um, you know, read the net CDF file into um, any of these point-based tools. So now we have the ability to, to pass those directly into um, you know, these point-based tools using Python embedding um, to, to um, you know, hopefully provide some computation um, efficiency. Um, also, we added the O-rank line type to the um, high resolution analysis HIRA output for point stats. Um, so, let's see. Um, for stat analysis and series analysis, um, we added in um, the ability to process multiple thresholds and write uh, multiple output line types um, using a, a single aggregate stat job. So, if you think back to um, the presentations we've given about stat analysis. Um, this gives you more um, filtering capability and, and more um, ways to stratify your data. Um, we also uh, did a, uh, provided a, a fix um, that was consuming too much um, memory in stat analysis to, to try and decrease that, that memory usage um, and, and make it um, you know, uh, more efficient again. Uh, we um, also um, not only uh, enhanced stat analysis to write the um, the Go index, um, but also added in um, the CBS index into the new um, SSIDX for um, skill score index stat line type. And we enhanced the, um, the series analysis to compute um, the Briar um, score and, and the using climatologies um, so that we could um, do some, some um, additional development for um, S2S um, uh, metrics. Um, for MET-TC tools, um, not only did we um, do some overhaul on the Genesis logic, um, which was the, the last bullet point, um, and added some um, development, added um, the use of calling the development and operational scoring algorithms that were introduced last week by Catherine, um, as well as uh, quite a few more configuration options. We also enhanced TC-Gen to verify um, NHC tropical um, weather outlook file, shape files such as this, and then also um, to read uh, rapid intensification EDEC and input line types um, and, and to ignore um, un unsupported um, EDEC probability line types, just so that um, we didn't have it um, erroring out if it didn't recognize um, all of the line types that were available. There's been a lot of work done for ensembles. Um, so um, both ensemble stat and gen ons prod we're um, updated to read all of the ensemble members from a single input file. Um, this is, you know, uh, being this type of bundling of ensemble members 
um, you know, we, we've seen in, in um, output not only from operational centers um, and, um, as well as um, a kind of multi-model type um, environments um, such as NMME um, and ICAP for aerosols and, and so forth. So we, we now have support for that. Um, Genounce Prod has been standardized to, um, to um, uh, or it has been um, enhanced to standardize ensemble members relative to its climatology. Um, as, and then ensemble stat has been updated with quite a few things, in, including um, to compute probabilistic um, statistics um, uh, on the fly um, to, uh, to try and, and make it easier for especially operational centers to, um, to be able to, to um, compute those probabilistic statistics um, with only one tool rather than having to push to, to several different tools. Um, we also enhanced ensemble stat to apply a HIRA method um, to ensembles. Um, this is, uh, once again, this was in uh, collaboration with the Met Office, and um, it, uh, it will um, result in very, very long um, ASCII output if you um, have a, a very large ensemble that um, you're trying to look at all the neighborhoods throughout all the ensemble members. Um, we'll hear more about um, a lot of the ensemble um, enhancements um, over the, the course of the next week or two um, as we, we move into introducing ensembles and, and ensemble um, gen ons prod. Um, ensemble stat was also um, uh, uh, enhanced to handle um, ensemble control members and to compute the Herzbach Herz um, CRPS algorithm and then also um, I, uh, compute the um, CRPS, CRPSS using um, the empirical method for the climatology. As far as like pre-processing and, and data plotting tools, you know, trying to, to do sanity checks and do pre-processing, there have been um, quite a few um, enhancements. Um, so to um, PBDNC, um, we have added in uh, the derivation of the mixed layer CAPE um, capability as well as um, should probably have moved the, the third bullet up underneath um, the second bullet, um, the enhancement of com computing um, PBL, um, log uh, PBL um, levels, planetary boundary la layer levels um, using PBDNC. TCGen um, was enhanced to verify gen um, genesis probabilities um, in the, the ATCF EDEC um, files. Uh, I think I already covered that, sorry about that. Um, we uh, made a change to make the dash um, type option for Gen VX mask a required one so that it, um, it, there's no default um, so that you have to tell Gen VX mask what kind of masking you wanted to do. I think that makes it just a little bit more clear. Um, we did a lot of work to improve the um, runtime for the performance of the point to grid tool that um, has been um, uh, demonstrated to use on um, uh, point observations such as local storm reports to, to generate things like surrogate severe um, and pra practically pro um, perfect prog um, data sets as well as um, it can be used on very dense um, uh, uh, like satellite data, dense um, data sets to do data thinning. Um, we also um, added in support for um, being able to use variable names um, in uh, point observation data, especially in NetCDF files, instead of um, always being tied to grid code. So that gives a lot more flexibility on the point observations that you can use in the point-based tools. And then finally, we overhauled um, plot point ops to be more highly configurable. So over here on the right-hand side is an example of looking at um, different types of, of, um, of observations of precipitation type um, in, the, in the dots overlaid over um, a gridded um, field that, um, <coughs> that um, shows the, um, the forecast um, pre precipitation types. Um, and so um, to be able to configure uh, the color coding based on um, you know, different fields and, and so forth um, for plot um, point obs um, is, was what was added. Um, <coughs> other configuration updates that I, I wanted to, to call out is um, that we did um, update PB to NC to be able to correct how the OBS prep buffer map name was used and added um, entries for um, the default um, OBS prep buffer map settings. Um, that was in con cons um, consultation with EMC. Um, there was a, um, a change to the binary threshold um, uh, 
configuration option within the wavelet stat um, uh, tool in order to um, provide more flexibility for use with um, convection allowing models, short range weather applications, and, and looking um, at the errors associated um, uh, with those applications. Um, and then um, TC pairs was, um, uh, uh, there's been an update in the configuration file for that to um, only write output for um, a, a configurable list um, at given valid times. We did a lot of work at the beginning of this release on Python embedding to make it um, much more user friendly. Um, so if nothing else, I would highly recommend um, updating to version 4.1 just so that you have much more um, Python embedding flexibility. Um, at your at your um, fingers. So, um, you know, it's all tied to NetCDF4 um, for temp files rather than what we had prior to that, which was this pickle logic, which we wound up having versionitis with. Um, and, and rather than going through all of this, I just wanted to say that, you know, we added a lot of support for X-Array. Um, we added support for things like Gaussian grids with Python em embedding. Um, you know, we, we um, um, you know, just kind of exercise Python embedding much more and, and made it much more user friendly. So I'll leave you to, to read the, the full list of, of what was added for Python embedding. As far as new statistics are, are um, uh, considered, um, we uh, modified, uh, we added um, some modifications to the virus score and the CRPS computation to match um, what is a legacy um, computation for EMC. For um, what you know, their their um, previous um, uh, system was called VSDB. Um, that's to allow for backward compatibility for them, so that they can keep their historical record um, going forward. Um, I, we already talked about the Herzbach CRPS algorithm um, that was added, um, and um, you know uh, the ability to um, to compute um, the skill scores and so forth using the empirical methods. Um, once again, we also talked about how CBS um, uh, score was um, was added. So this is just calling out that it is new output. Um, here's an example of the definition of the CBS um, index. I should say not CBS score um, that is specified by the WMO for uh, exchanges of data. Um, we also um, added the scatter index to the continuous line type um, for use primarily with marine and, and cryosphere um, evaluation. Um, I already mentioned the O-rank line type and the G, G and G beta um, to the distance map line type. And then um, we added the genesis match pair output line um, for the TC gen tool. Um, just some miscellaneous um, um, additions. Um, we did add in support um, we, with our percentile thresholding and, and um, um, you know, trying to do evaluation um, using percentile thresholding. We have one option where you can say, um, I want to use the percentiles that give a frequency bias um, equal to one. Um, and then you can, you know, compute your statistics based on that. Um, what we did was we added in the ability to um, specify um, that we want to um, maybe look at the frequency bias of 0 0.09 um, instead, um, just because you, you may be looking for, um, you know, some some way um, what's going on when the the model is slightly, um, uh, you know, biased or, or um, you know, not necessarily um, predicting um, the the forecast as, as routinely as it should. Um, so it just gives a little bit more flexibility in that percentile thresholding capability. Another um, update that we made, and this is for mode, um, it's the area ratio. And prior to um, this version, mode, um, the area ratio was basically um, computed um, with the, the larger of the two area ratios, whether it's the forecast area or the OBS ratio. Whichever one was larger was on, um, on the bottom, you know, in the denominator in order to make sure that we um, never had um, a square that went to um, infinity. That's great from a, an engineering perspective, but it's not um, necessarily as, as meaningful from a scientific perspective. So um, we have um, cha changed that around so that now it, the area ratio is always forecast area over OBS area. Um, we've updated a lot of the logic to be able to support some S2S applications. And then, um, uh, but I, I won't go into all of that at this point. Um, we just recently added support for rotated long grids in NetCDF format. Um, and, and then um, 
uh, some updates to some of the grid support that we have. Um, so uh, we added in max, max updraft helicity and max reflectivity, um, and then you know max um, vertical velocity and and um, and so forth, um, and then um, support for Air Force grid tables as well. Um, one thing I, I did want to point out, and um, I've, I've been, you know, trying to, to wrap my brain around this. Um, I thought that we had support for multivariate mode. While we have done incremental de development um, towards it, we just recently tried to merge the, um, the multivariate mode branch um, into develop, and it was not successful. And, it, and it's too close to the release date to, to try and um, get that done. So um, I, I know this is going to be disappointing, especially for at least one user that's out there that I've been talking to. Um, but MV mode is um, is not going to be in the, the 4.1.0 release. Um, we will work towards getting it um, integrated into the the next um, uh, beta release at, um, right after we get this done. So hopefully it'll be available like uh, end of May. Um, but that may not um, necessarily um, suit your needs, um, that one user that I've been talking to. Sorry about that. Okay, so that looks like it ends all of the, um, what I thought were um, uh, enhancements that we needed to discuss with regards to MET. And the fact that it took almost a half an hour just to go through that um, suggests that there's a lot of enhancements. I'm going to stop right now and see if um, see what kind of questions um, there are and or um, give, uh, I'll see what questions there are. And then I also want to give um, John HG an, an opportunity to um, highlight some other things that he feels um, I, you know, need to be highlighted. So questions first. Perry. Yeah, the, something that I noted in you know, and all this passed by was that you have something something about the ob name not being stuck to the grib name. Mm -hmm. um, how is that quite going to work? I'm just, uh, we don't need to go, if it's detailed, we don't have to go through it here, but uh, is that just, uh, I mean, that, that that's how you would identify it through grib. So I guess there's a different way that you're doing it, I guess. Um, yeah, so, so um, you know, uh, we didn't have a lot of flexibility for point observations. Many times um, we needed um, the point observation to either be using the GRIB code or the GRIB name. Um, you know, even in the, the 11 um, column, um, you know, standard met ASCII format, we, it was very tied to the GRIB code. Um, so now, so we've always had the ability to, to specify a specific, a different name for the forecast um, field versus the observation field. Yes. Now um, it's it's um, less it, it's not tied to the observation um, uh, name doesn't have to be tied to a grid code it can be um, you know called X Y Z um, it, you know if, if that's what you want to call it um, once again uh, just really quick John H G am I um, representing this properly or did I miss something Yeah I you know I don't remember the details of this issue the the thing to do would be to go look you know, figure out which issue this goes with and look at the details. I suspect, I, I think what we're what we're talking about here is, um, it, I think in points that we were doing a grib code, like we had a string that was the name of the variable we're looking for. And in some context, we were doing a grib table lookup at, for that string. And if there was no grib table, er, grib entry for it, then that caused, a, caused an issue. So we just refined the library logic so that you can use strings. Um, you should be able to use strings in all contexts that don't uh, correspond to a grib table. So it's really more of a kind of a library cleanup thing. And I, I don't uh, think, Perry, that you will expect you will have any. Uh, you should expect any changes to the processing logic that you're doing. Okay, it's, it seems yeah. interesting, and I was just wondering if uh, uh, what what that was. And I guess um, I don't mean to interrupt other people, but I also was I, I was kind of loosely on the thread about the PBL derivation logic. Can you briefly explain uh, what's enhanced there? I would have to go back to the issue. Um, it, it, it happened very early on in the um, in the release cycle. I think in beta one or beta two. Um, I'm I'm going to it right now. Um, 
Let me, let me, um, or yeah, we'll have to go through navigate, or let, let's get, we can get back to you on it. It's, yeah. Okay. I'll just read but, the issue. Okay. Um, Jack, you had a question. Yeah, it was along the same lines. I was reading that bullet there about the PB to the NC and the derived mixed layer. I was, is there a list somewhere of the different derivations that that portion does? For PB to NC, that tool? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, So it looks like Tara has left us for some unknown reason. Uh, hopefully she, she hops back on here soon. Um, so, you know, all of in PV to NC, in the configuration file for PV to NC, there are a list of variables that begin with D underscore, capital D underscore. And those, those are the variables that can be derived. Um, that's what the, the D stands for. Um, while we're waiting for Tara to come back on, I will go to GitHub and show you what that looks like. Uh, let me share my screen here. Oh, there you are, Tara. Go ahead. You want to? You can start sharing again, Tara. You're muted. Okay, I'll start sharing. But do you? Did you address Jack's question? Yeah, I was pointing out that all the, all the variables that begin with D underscore in the configuration file are derivable. Okay. Uh, and presumably, there's a list of those in the user's guide as well. Um, I'm going to drop here into the comments. Um, a, or I already did. There's the release notes that are in the Met documentation. And after each one, there's a link to the issue. So if we want to see more information about the PBL issue, um, you can just search for PBL in the release notes. And that's issue um, 1913. And so here is a link in the comments to, or in the, in the chat to that, that Met issue, 1913. So that's that's how you can uh, find more details. Basically, Perry, in this case, um, there were some unrealistic PBL values that were computed. And so in working with you and other folks at EMC, we refined the kind of uh, error checking derivation logic to replace any values greater than 10,000 with bad data. But, right. yeah. I, I kind of remember those discussions. I just, because it was a while back, it was like, I didn't realize it was done. So, because <laughs> um, it's good news. Yay! <laughs> okay. Jack, and, uh, did that answer that your question, question, Jack, or do you have do you have more questions? Oh, was that a leading D or a leading V for the variable? D is in derived. Okay. Thanks. I should be able to find some. Okay. Um. Time for one last question. On Matt. Okay, hearing none. John, um, do you have any other um, uh, development that you want to highlight? You know, I don't. Um, there, it, it has been a lot of work going into this into this minor release. I one thing I really like a lot actually is the plot point obs tool. Um, the the enhancements we've made to that. If if you want to, and it, it still isn't intended as a general purpose plotting utility, but if you want to overlay point observations over gridded data. And, uh, and and color either one of them um, by a range of values, see how things line up. I think it's a really um, useful tool to, to see how your 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 for, your gridded forecast and your your point obs line up and compare. Yeah, a good sanity check. Definitely. Okay, um, so moving on because we still have a lot to cover. Uh, so for Met Viewer, um, I wanted to point out that the that we have a, a transition. Um, we for the past two years we've been transitioning away from using our statistics over to Python um, for um, all of our existing plotting templates, um, and uh, and splitting that up between MetCalcPy um, to do the computation and MetPlotPy to do the plotting. The reason why we, we were doing that is because, uh, once again, many operational systems um, do not um, want to have a dependency on our statistics, um, and Python is, is a, um, a, a more preferred uh, method for doing um, the, the plotting, especially. Um, and so we're, we're trying to accommodate, um, you know, the needs of, of our operational partners while still having the ability to support it out to the community in the same way. So um, we have actually completed that transition. Um, Python is now the default plotting method 
um, with our statistics um, still being available for testing purposes, but when you um, when you go into the Met Viewer interface, um, you know uh, it'll it'll show that Python is is checked and, and what is being used um, by default. And once again, we'll go over how to to um, you know use this tool um, in April. But additionally, for those that are using Met Viewer already. Um, the Java um, uh, database loading um, application has been disabled, and now all the database loading is being done um, using Python. So we've also removed um, that particular dependency on, on having Java for the data, database loading. Um, so uh, what was implemented um, this uh, release, and it doesn't include all of the, the, um, the plotting templates, but quite a few of them. Um, include um, uh, plotting of Taylor diagrams and contour plots, um, uh, the, the economic cost loss value plot, um, ensemble spread skill, it's a bin ensemble spread skill plot, um, as well as bar plots, box plots, and histograms. Um, and the histograms include, um, you know, probability histograms, relative his, um, histograms, and rank histograms. Um, prob uh, probability is actually probability integral transform um, histograms, and relative is, is relative position um, histograms. And then um, we also um, have uh, transitioned over what's called the, tr the revision series capability, um, looking at forecast consistency. Um, right now it's focused only on using output from mode time domain, and you have to run mode time domain in a, a revision series methodology in order to be able to, um, to use it. But all of that um, has been transferred over to Python. Additionally, um, uh, there's been um, additions to MetViewer to um, allow for um, custom lines to be added to the plots um, that are generated in Python. Support for the new skill score index stat line type to allow for um, the um, aggregation and, and computation of that using um, Met um, at Viewer, um, prior to this, that you would have to use stat analysis to do that. Um, you know, the aggregation and plotting of the Heike skill score um, statistic um, you, uh, using the uh, multiple categorical um, uh, CTS line type. Um, the support for the plotting of, of the new G and G beta statistics and then um, the support for being able to, to aggregate and plot the um, scatter index as well. Um, I guess, uh, Tatiana, uh, was there anything else you specifically wanted to bring up about um, the Met Viewer interface? I don't even know if Tatiana's on, come to think of it. Okay, she's not here um, today, so. We won't take more time waiting to see if she had anything else she wanted to add. Um, I, I should also mention that um, we, uh, I, I wanted to have a slide for the MedExpress, um, you know, what's in um, the current uh, version of MedExpress. Unfortunately, time ran out before I was able to, um, to get that information pulled together. So um, for those that are using MedExpress, um, uh, we will be sending out, a, um, I'll, I'll, I'll try and add that to this the slide deck um, by Thursday when we, um, you know, let everybody know that the the, um, the recording is available, so that uh, we, we will have a full representation of what's in the release. Okay, so once again, at the the core of MetViewer, supporting MetViewer um, is MetCalcPy, MetPlotPy, and MetDataDB. And once again, there's there's um, a lot that the, of work that was done that I'm going to represent as use cases in the um, in Met um, Plus, but um, beyond what was um, you know added for use cases, um, you know there there have been some additional um, things that, that people should know about. For example, um, MetCalcPy, we um, have restructured the the directory um, to better reflect um, what is um, uh, what we need um, to to support for MetCalcPy. Um, this particular release was the first release, um, or this, actually the second release, where we had a lot of community contribution coming into MetPlus um, from, um, you know, researchers that wanted to add um, their, especially S2S diagnostics. And so um, we had to revamp the directory structure. So now there's, um, 
There's um, statistical modules um, and then pre-processing and diagnostics and ut utility modules. So that, that um, uh, reorganization, I think, will allow us to, um, to uh, navigate all the different types of computations that are coming at the MetPlus team from especially the um, community co um, contributed code. Um, for the revision series, um, we added um, the computation of auto and cross um, covariance and co correlation um, to be able to identify whether um, the revisions or the consistency measures are um, systematically changing or if there's random noise associated with it. Um, in an effort to try and address some um, concerns about operational um, uh, partners um, and the, um, some of the, the Python packages that were originally introduced um, uh, in our attempts to um, transition from R to, to Python and, and um, to take in community contribution, we um, actually integrated Bootstrap and Penguin um, package classes um, to reduce the number of dependencies. We also um, did some additional work on vertical interpolation of fields in Python um, between pressure and height coordinates um, for both the TCM RMW tools as well as some of our um, support for um, things like drop sounds and so forth um, in, uh, in MET+. Plus. Um, uh, we have also removed um, or we've, we've changed um, the, the capability to be able to write intermediary um, files, excuse me, to user sp um, specified directories um, to allow for the secured installation on the HPCs, but then to allow the users that need to be using these intermediary files for plotting and, and calculation um, to, to be able to, to write to a directory where, you know, they have control over that. Um, we've added in the capability to um, create plots for the stratospheric diagnostics that are currently being integrated into MetPlus, um, but uh, to the best of my knowledge, um, the, those diagnostics have not made it all the way to a use case. So we have the, the plotting um, capability. Now we're waiting for some, um, some additional development in the Met tools to be able to, to complete um, the rest of those diagnostics. And then we've also um, added in support to, for reading that CDF files in MetDataDB um, for use with um, S2S metrics. And what that is doing is it's, it's growing the scope of MetDataDB and we will probably in the next um, release be renaming MetDataDB to be something like MetDataIO um, for Python um, applications. Um, and then we're adding support for new line types um, it, uh, to loading to MetDataDB. Was there a, a, um, a hand that went up or a question? I heard it building. Okay. Sure, there's a question from Austin in the chat. Are MetDataDB and VSDB SQL databases? Um, so VSDB um, it, is a uh, is basically a data format and a and a uh, and, uh, um, a legacy um, uh, verification package. The output from VSDB as well as from Met um, Met Plus uh, are loaded into um, you know the the Met Data DB. Met Data DB is not SQL per se because uh, MySQL. Well, they, it is SQL per se. Um, it used to be MySQL. Now it's Maria um, DB on um, uh, platforms where Maria is supported um, on AWS. I believe right now it's Aurora DB um, and so forth. Uh, does anybody else from the the Met Plus Analysis um, Tool Suite want to um, uh, correct me or um, enhance that description? Uh, no, you, I think you got them both right. Um, they, those are both um, SQL type databases. Um, so yeah, the answer is yes. And, you know, we use different ones in different places, but yes, you got it right, Tara. Okay. And I think that this is all I was going to highlight. Yeah, this was all I was going to highlight from MetCalpi, MetPotPi, and MetDataDB. Is there anything else that um, you or Minna or anyone wants to, um, you know, highlight that I missed? Looks like you got everything. Thank you, Tara. <laughs> um, any any further questions from those that are participating? Yeah, Tara, this is Austin again. Um, if you don't mind, uh, you or somebody else, uh, uh, the question is, do we, I, 
so my curiosity about the database is, is this sort of like a standalone database that installs with NetClass, or do you need to have your own SQL database server up and running somewhere and activate that to reach the uh, Net package? Um, yeah, so so you would have to have a, a, um, a server where you can, you can install um, a, a SQL style um, database on it. So therefore, this can't um, the the actual um, relational database cannot be used on high performance computers. However, there's been a lot of work done to make sure that that CalcPy and that PlotPy, while they support the the user interface um, applications, if you're someone who wants to have a GUI um, to be able to to navigate um, what you you know setting up your your plotting and so forth, you can do that. But you can also just use the YAML files that are tied to um, to the, the um, setting up of the, the, um, the plotting and, and the calculations and, and run it on an HPC from the command line. And that's part of what we've been working with EMC on, um, you know, just making sure that it works in an HPC environment. Um, and now I'm going to throw it back over to Hank and Minna and see if um, you want to correct my statement, which feel free to do so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, I, I think that, that encapsulated well. So yeah, Austin, um, you do have to set up your own database, which you would populate with your data. There's not a, you know, sort of a central database that you can connect to with, with, um, a whole bunch of data. Um, and then Tara's right. We don't have full capability yet, but we are bypassing some of the database requirements and just going straight from line type to plots and other things, but it's not completely ready yet. That's okay. I see. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it does. Um, and just one more question. So somewhere deep in the net package, are there schemas that we use to, uh, that we use to format our database or we sort of make up our own schemas? No, there is definitely um, a part of the installation process and the um, the setting up of loading a new um, a new it, basically a new database um, for a, your particular set of data. Um, it is applying a, a schema um, that has been defined by the, um, the the folks that are supporting MetData DB, um, which you know has this loading um, capability in it. Um, so um, that's all part of the loading process. It's all kind of, um, you know, managed by, once again, um, a, a YAML. I think it's YAML, um, I'm assuming. Um, uh, it's a configuration file where you can, you, you know, you, you set all that stuff up. Once again, Hank, Minna, feel free to add to that. Yeah, I can't add much. That's, that's uh, more of a Tatiana question, um, you know, Tatiana. Um, Tatiana and Vanita sort of um, handle all that database schema stuff, but we, we do have schema files and um, you wouldn't okay. have to do it on your own. Yep. Okay, very good. Well, thank you very much for the detailed answers. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Last call for questions on this. Otherwise, um, in the interest of time, we might want to actually keep moving forward. Any questions? Okay. So then um, let's move on to MET plus. I left that for the end because that kind of wraps up everything that um, has been added and, and so forth. Um, I could count up 24 different new, um, new use cases, but I feel like I missed a couple. So um, my apologies um, if I, I've missed any. Um, so we have added um, several use cases that um, demonstrate um, you know, a particular tool. Those are in the MET tool wrapper. Um, excuse me, um, directory under the Parm directory and use cases and so forth within the MET Plus um, installation. So there is a wrapper now around Yoda to NC tool as well as around the Gen Onsprod tool. Um, we have added, because we added in um, uh, the ability to um, set up GFDL um, tracker for um, identifying um, tropical cyclone, extra tropical cyclone um, tracks, as well as TC Genesis. Um, so we we now have um, uh, you know an example of of running um, setting up GF, GFDL tracker for um, you know um, 
TC, um, extra TC, and TC genesis. Um, we have an example of how to, for the feature relative use case, where um, tiles are extracted um, around a feature and then you can compute um, and look for um, uh, systematic errors. Um, we, we do have an example of how to use extract tiles using mode time domain, which is a, a, new, um, a new feature prior to this um, extract tiles were only tied to output from the GFDL tracker. And then um, we just recently added in um, example, an example of how to use Python embedding of point obs in, I think it's the point stat tool, but I wasn't able to confirm that um, before this meeting, but in one of the point based tools. Um, for precipitation, um, uh, uh, these are in the application, model application um, uh, folder um, directory. Um, so there's an example of um, being able to um, uh, do precipitation type comparisons across three models. Um, sorry, that was repeated twice. Sorry about that. Um, already mentioned the, um, the example of, of being able to um, uh, set up um, uh, the GFDL tracker um, and run it for um, you know the three different type of um, tropical cyclone uh, events, as well as um, we noticed that we were missing a, a basic example of how to run TC um, verification from a, a, a ATCF A deck versus B deck, um, and so we added in that very basic um, use case into the TC um, model application area. I already talked about. Um, uh, for medium range weather, having a feature relative um, example using um, a mode time domain output um, for uh, using um, that for the, the centroids for the um, extract tiles. So the full use case is in the medium range weather app area. We um, transitioned um, cryosphere, which was a standalone category, um, and brought that in under marine and cryosphere. And then we've also added in um, several use cases looking at SST, um, sea surface salinity, both at one day and um, composites and eight day means, as well as ice cover. Once again, I feel like um, I'm missing a couple, but um, uh, that's what I was able to, to pull together. Um, and then um, several use cases that demonstrate the computation of um, several core um, S2S um, diagnostics, including RMM1 and 2, um, OMI, the, um, the diagrams that are associated with that, um, weather re regime calculations specifically for um, the ECMWF um, uh, analysis, um, and then you know the plotting of OMI and RMM um, for the um, from the MJO indices, and then we're um, specifically trying to pull out examples of how to um, compute some of the the core. Um, uh, capability that's needed for many of the subseasonal to seasonal applications, such as computing zonal and meridional means, so that as we move forward with adding in more diagnostics, those um, components are just um, readily available for the, the community to use. Um, other MET Plus enhancements, um, I uh, added also the harmonic preprocessing um, uh, uh, as a as a um, standalone um, capability for the RMM use case, um, uh, adding you know good stack configuration options for the distance mapping that was added for the G beta and G um, and other distance map applications. We added in um, at the end of the computation of the blocking and weather regime indices um, the the ability to run that through stat analysis to actually compute scores. Um, such as root mean square error or anomaly um, uh, anomaly um, correlation and so forth. So we, we do have examples of how to go from the indices and, and compute statistics from it. Um, we enhanced um, TC pairs to be able to do some additional um, uh, stratification that was not originally included. Um, added in um, some additional um, support for PCP combined. Um, as well as um, being able to, um, to include MetPy. We have an example of using MetPy um, Python package in a Python embedding um, example um, for the feature relative use case. So, that, so if you want to start computing diagnostic fields using MetPy, um, once again, there's an example of that. Um, handling of some additional um, uh, configuration options um, and probability fields and, and so forth. Um, so I think that 
that's all I had for MET Plus enhancements that um, I, you know was kind of at a high level. Once again, um, George, did you was there anything specifically? I I, I don't think I captured the um, the use of the .com file and the fact that it, it had been you know we've we've kind of um, made it much more um, much more streamlined. Um, is that something that you wanted to uh, mention real quick here? Um, with the dot .com file, do you mean the yeah. reorganization of the variables? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the reorganization, the um, you know the the reduction in comments and and so forth. Um, yeah, so we um, we've been sort of receiving feedback about the organization of some of these comp files, and um, made some changes to sort of rearrange some things to group common variables together so that it's a little easier to read and understand. Um, one a big um, improvement of this is um, there previously were separate sections for the corresponding directories and template variables that sort of go together. Um, and so some of these changes allow us to group those together so you're not um, kind of bouncing around through the file to find things that are related to each other. Um, and we've sort of been continuing to get more feedback and kind of um, working on some ideas of how we want to come up with a sort of standard structure for organizing these files. Um, I believe there's an open GitHub discussion to solicit feedback about this. Mm -hmm. um, but I, so, so some of the files have been in, um, sort of enhanced in this way. Um, but I think the sort of main overhaul of all of these would be done for the 5.0 release. Um, so if anybody has any strong opinions on how um, these files are organized and what's, you know, what's useful, what's helpful, what's confusing, uh, then please feel free to leave some feedback so that we can make an informed decision on how to move forward. So I, I think, um, you know, once we get the release out, maybe we will schedule some time for you to, to go over that um, particular set of changes again um, during one of the, uh, um, the next training um, sessions, just so that people can actually see um, you know, and and, and um, see what the changes are, and, and be able to to start thinking about how to work through it. If that sounds good to you. Yeah, definitely. It's a lot easier to look at something and understand it than. Yeah. yeah. And I know that you've gone over some of it before, but it's just good to refresh everybody's memory. I agree. Okay. Any? Um, we only have a couple minutes left. Any questions from anybody uh, about specific MET Plus enhancements? Okay, um, while you're thinking about whether you want to um, ask a question, here's how to obtain MET Plus version 4.1.0 once um, we actually, um, you know, send out the announcement. Um, if you uh, go to um, community code MET Plus download at dtcenter.org, um, you'll come to a page where there's this area that's um, called recommended and it's got green and it will have links to all of the different um, uh, aspects of MET Plus, all the different components. Um, right now, yeah, clearly the, the current um, uh, official release, recommended release, um, is still the um, what's associated with MET Plus version 4.0.0. Um, so we, you will see this updated to all the, the correct versioning. Um, or you can look at the user's guide um, for instructions on how to use manage externals, which um, should be able to, to bring um, to bring everything together um, and, and help you with installation. Um, and then um, start looking um, in the future for, um, in, a, in our development, um, the beta versions that are coming out for um, MET Plus version 5.0, which is going to be a, a, a major um, release. And that is all I have. And we just barely fit it into time, but um, still want to leave it open. Are there any last minute questions? Okay. Well, thank you for your time and attention. Um, as I said, we're, we're hoping to get this release out before we meet again next week. Next week, um, we are going to be focusing in on a lot of the changes that were made to the Ensemble Stat Tool and the, um, and the Ensemble, the Gen Ons Prod Tool that um, has, has now um, also been um, developed. So thank you. <laughs>